Welcome everyone and hello, how's everyone doing? So welcome to our third virtual ELA uh, PD. Today we're going to be focusing on writing strategies and how do we get our students to write, to uh, write effectively, and to enjoy writing. So let's go ahead and jump in. All right, so let's begin first with uh, this position paper that was presented by the National Council of Teachers of English, and this was done last year. And uh, they are going to basically express what many teachers across the nation are, uh, you know, are feeling, are, are dealing with. And that has to do with writing. And so one of the first principles we talk about is writing is social and rhetorical. So let's just kind of take a look at this. And I'm just going to highlight. Uh, I'm going to read it out loud for those who might be driving or not able to read uh, as they are, you know, maybe headed home. So it says the first part of this principle, writing is social and rhetorical, focus on external factors and writing. R writing is produced by people in specific situations and contexts and often, but not always, circulates among people. Writing is thus social. I'm going to emphasize that. Writing is social. It is intended to speak to audiences for particular purposes. Even when a writer writes for themselves, for example, in a blog or diary, they are their own audience. When it is effective, Writing is rhetorical. It means it takes into account values, ideologies, interests, needs, and commitments of the people, the audiences for whom it is intended. So let's think about that for a second. Because a lot of times our students feel disconnected from the writing because they don't understand that there's an audience. And, and maybe they know the teacher is reading it, but they might have become almost um, you know, desensitized to the idea that someone else is looking at their writing. So if we expand that world, if we allow peers to read their writing, if we allow community members, family members, uh, all of a sudden students realize, hey, someone's looking at my words and, and my voice matters. And that's one of the main themes of this workshop is that we need to get our students to feel that their ideas, what they have to say, do matter. Uh, students don't want to write because they don't think they have really an opinion or they're not interested in the topic or they don't think their their uh, opinion is valuable. So how do we create a space for them to believe that their ideas do matter, their voice is important? All right, let's take a look. So what does the research say? All right, so basically this is from the Pew uh, Research uh, Institution. It says teenagers' lives are filled with writing. Yeah, they're writing all the time. All teens write for school, and 93% of teens say they write for their own pleasure. Uh, most notably, the vast majority of teens have eagerly embraced written communication with their peers as they share messages on their social network pages, in emails, in instant messages online, and through fast-paced thumb choreography on their cell phones. Parents believe that their children write more as teens than they did at that age. They're reading more, they're writing more, they're interacting a lot more. Um, and it might be, you know, harming some of them in the sense that they have become addicted to the cell phone. But we can also understand that that is the world they are living in. That they, we're not going to take them back to the past. And, and I like to make a reference to, you know, the background that I have. Uh, it's my daughter's, uh, you know, little blanket, little poster uh, of Abbey Road. The Beatles said, you know, our kids are going back and forth. They, they do the research things that they like. They go for because of, of social media, because of that mini computer they have on their, their hand, they can explore so many worlds, worlds that are interested, interesting to them. So uh, what else do we have? So what are kids writing? So teenagers are writing, as we know, in TikTok and social media and, um, you know, all types. Uh, they're, of course, text messaging. They are vlogging. Some of them have their own websites. Uh, they are interested in publishing. Just this past week, uh, about a week ago, I attended uh, over at Los Altos High School their annual uh, Poetry Out Loud their spoken word session and they had over 40 students mr contreras who organized it had to turn students away uh these were 40 courageous students who took to the mic to share just raw and vulnerable material their own writing and so that's beautiful to see so students have this eagerness to be heard and it's important to be heard um what is writing now writing should not fall on the shoulders of the english teachers this is a cross-curricular uh, standard, right, skills that we all need to help in developing. So I always welcome other educators that are not English teachers to these workshops. 
So we know that in BAPA classes, or if they're sitting in art classes, they need to explain what they have made. Uh, they're writing lab reports. They're writing and reading a lot in math, so they have to have that strong literacy skills. They're writing for real world documents, resumes, job applications, college applications. And uh, many, many teachers now, because of Canvas and uh, a lot of online tools, are taking to discussion boards. And this is very true at the college level. Students are uh, doing academic discussions on uh, boards like this, chat rooms, and it's important that they know that voice. And finally, we have our, you know, some of our traditional essays. Yes, our students need to know how to write a good, strong uh, essay, but it shouldn't be the only thing that they write in our classes. That is one part of it. And so, um, you know, what's one of the biggest challenge? Is that even though students are reading and writing a lot more, our test scores have not gone up in the past years. This is from 2018-19, uh, last time that we had a somewhat of a normal year. And kids again are disconnected even though they're writing so much more and there's an interest in writing uh, whether it's English or math again a lot of times sadly this is the image that we have uh, across our classroom so yes data is important and when we get those test scores but you can see it as you look around your room and the kids who are looking at the clock uh, you know playing on their computer right uh, just not engaged so how do we bring them in and, and get them interested in writing well let's take a look at some data so here we have the state of California. Again, I looked at 2018 and 19. Uh, this is on DataQuest, so it's available to all of you. Um, and basically, take a look. Not even 50% of our students in our state, one of the richest states in the world, uh, is uh, having these higher test scores. This is just for ELA. Take a look at our district. We did a little bit better as a district. Uh, however, you know, we're right around that 50 percentile now. We might have, you know, again, dropped in those scores. Now, I'm not going to say that test scores, this is just what 11th grade, well, actually, this is all the grade levels. There's a lot of factors that go into play when we talk about test scores, but it is one part of it, right? Take a look here, and this is, again, uh, all the different grade levels when it comes to just writing and research. Remember that many of our students are doing a performance task where they have to look at different sources and synthesize the information and make some kind of statement about it. So how are they doing in when it comes to research and inquiry? So that's why I say our students cannot just be writing the traditional, you know, essay where it's just uh, one source or just, uh, you know, one type of writing. They need to be exposed to a lot, but it shouldn't be just for the test. It should be because it's good ways of expressing their ideas. Uh, again, take a look at how, you know, the percentage of kids who are actually above standard and look at how many are near standard, so not quite there yet, right? Even all the way to our 11th graders. Um, and so, you know, this is not to dishearten us, it's to give us motivation and to say, hey, we need to change the way things are. We cannot think that going back to basics is going to be the remedy because it wasn't before, right? This is again, prior to the pandemic. So what is it that students need? A lot of students and teachers say that, you know, our curriculum, uh, you know, it is our adopted curriculum study scene kind of gets a little mm, routine, a little mundane. And so here we have, you know, the, the typical reading passage. And yes, students can highlight um, and then they would do the think questions and then they do. Maybe they listen to these, uh, you know, these videos where students are interacting in a traditional classroom. Um, this might be something I just give to my students. They do it for homework, or maybe they do a little bit of reading in class. And this could become very boring very quickly. Because if you have 11th graders, they've been doing study sync, using study sync since sixth grade. And again, you can understand why they are probably bored with this. So what can you do differently? Let's take a look at the end of unit prompts. So these are the EWP. I just took a couple of grades. Um, just let's take a moment to glance at these, right? So here is sixth grade. They're going to think about the selection. So they read some excerpts uh, that revolve around a life-changing experience. And this is write an informative essay in which you explain how three individuals in three of the excerpts you have uh, read faced life-changing experiences and analyze the impact of these changes on their lives and their countries. Whoa, that is a pretty broad, big uh, prompt. Uh, it takes a lot of graphic organizers and scaffolding 
Uh, and, and again, some of our students might find this one challenging uh, because it's not just one character. You have to analyze three characters and answer two questions, analyze the impact on their lives and on their countries. So again, it's a pretty lengthy type of writing. Take a look at the 10th graders. Uh, they did one on the destiny unit, right? Choose two of the excerpts and write an argumentative essay that makes a claim about which text most convincingly answers the unit's essential question, how much of, we, of what happens in our lives do we actually control? So this is really an essay about rhetoric, about whose style is most convincing. Again, that's pretty challenging because they're doing this for two pieces. And let's look at that last one here. And it says, uh, how do the events depicted in both literature and historical documents that you have read introduce and develop the theme related to colonial American identity? So first they have to identify what is the theme. Then they have to choose two texts, right? And uh, they have to explain their analysis on how that colonial identity was created. Uh, if you have seniors sitting in your class, the last time they sat through a normal school year was back when they were a uh, eighth grader. Okay, let's just think about that. Because my son is a, a senior right now and his freshman year was interrupted. He didn't have that second semester. There was all kinds of struggles students were dealing with out there. Then sophomore year, he was in distance learning. And then his junior year, he came back to face a lot of uncertainty, a lot of subs. So we get a lot of inconsistency. So finally this year, he's sitting through a class. And if we're as teachers going full steam ahead, if we're feeling like we need to catch them up for the past three years, um, our kids are going to disconnect. And then we have all these classroom issues or apathy in our classroom. So what can we do differently? Well, let's take a look. Teens write for a variety of reasons as part of school assignments, to get a good grade, to stay in touch with friends, right? But in our focus groups, teens said they are motivated to write when they can select topics that are relevant to their lives and interests re uh, and report greater enjoyment of school writing when they have the opportunity to write creatively. Having teachers or adults who challenge them, present them with interesting curricula and give them detailed feedback also serves as motivators for teens. Teens also report writing for an audience motivates them to write and write well. So yes, eventually I'm going to get to those, you know, high level writing skills, but not during the first six weeks of a uh, very difficult years. So I'm going to, you know, let all of you know, take a deep breath. Look at what your students need. If, if writing about three characters is not the best thing for them to do right now, maybe work as a department, as a school and say, you know what, we're going to modify this one. No one is saying that all students must do the same prompt at the same way. That's not our philosophy. We do what's best for our students so that they can have a sense of success and so they can progress, right? Writing is, is never, an, uh, uh, we never get to perfect writing. It's always a progress and we don't want to develop in their mind this idea that it's horrible, it, they have bad writing, right? Because again, it's developmental. So what can we do? All right, so let's take a look at some ideas. So I'm going to go ahead and share some ideas that some teachers are out there doing, uh, and they're looking at the research projects that are also part of the study sync unit. So before we get to this one, we're writing about characters, we're going to write about themselves. So in this one, uh, students interview a friend or family member who has had a life-changing experience and um, and they get to talk a little bit about it. So let's, I'm going to go ahead and show. Here is uh, Miss N uh, Diaz's class at Nelson Elementary School. These are her sixth graders. They were so proud to interview family members. And I'm going to be honest, some of them may be very emotional as they're talking about, you know, the loss of a parent. Uh, some of them talking about illnesses. And so you could see the kids here just, you know, really um, proud of their family members. And notice the little symbol at the top. This is what we would call a deeper learning lesson because students have choice. They're working through perseverance. Uh, they are being creative. They're communicating with others. They're global citizens. They're, they know that their academics goes beyond the four walls. So I'll let you, you know, you can listen to those on your own. You will be getting this PowerPoint. Um, and so I know it'll play here and I'll go to the next one. All right. Uh, what else? So let's take a look at the 10th graders. So again, 
a deeper learning lesson is to do this little project here where it says uh, students can use video audio recordings right to analyze the idea of destiny versus freedom so what does one of our teachers do uh, let's take a look using flipgrid uh one of our teachers decided that students would choose a song that represents their life philosophy do they believe in free will or do they believe in destiny and they had to create this little mini poster and share what the song meant some of the lyrics some of the symbols but then also choose a character and find a song that would fit them. So, you know, we are the champions uh, for the outliers or uh, I'll walk this earth by myself for, uh, for Macbeth, right? So again, talk about that higher level critical thinking skills. This is done through Flipgrid, for, uh, now called Flip, right? And that's Ms. Robles' class. Let's look at another one. Uh, and we have uh, this one, all right? So again, a deeper learning uh, lesson would be, uh, you know, how do I students understand what it means to to have an identity as a country, right, as a nation? So before you get to that, here's a project that I actually did in my class a couple years ago, and that is in order to understand the concept of identity, right, students are going to look at a different country that is not Europe or Great Britain, and they're going to really analyze what it means to establish a country. So instead of having my students go out and research, in my class using Jamboard, my students sat together in groups of four or five and designed their own country, a virtual futuristic city. And if you click on the tutorial down below, I go step by step on how do you use Jamboard to create this virtual city. Oh my goodness, the kids had such a blast coming up with, you know, where do they put their government building? Do, should they have a, a place of, of, you know, religion, spiritual, right? Uh, should there be in a place of entertainment? So they had these great rich conversations about things that they value and, and how that could be a conflict in certain places and, and what represents a, a country and a nation. After they did this, now I can get them into that higher level thinking skills right of the excerpts but not until they have grasped the concept completely so what else uh think questions why not just make up into a collaborative lesson so students can pair up uh, they can work in small teams where they take turns deciding what's the best answer right you don't want just to uh, sit them together and, and do the assignment you really want to create a a place where they're collaborating on an answer so Maybe each student comes up with an answer and then they have to vote on which one was the best answer. Yes, does it take longer? Yes, but is it deeper? Way much deeper, more meaningful conversations. And remember, speaking is also always a precursor to strong writing. Uh, here's another one that I like to use. I have a little fun with this one and that is a musical chairs type and it's called Stand Up, Hand Up, Pair Up. And so I'll play music, they're walking around and when I stop that music, they need to put their hand up and pair up with someone uh, and have a discussion. Maybe they have the strips of questions. Maybe they have quotes from the text and they're going to talk about it. So when students are moving around and engage, it, it takes away that need to, to get distracted. Again, they're developing their literacy skills and they're making this assignment a lot more interesting. All right, uh, what else? Oh, I've been going on and on. Everywhere I go now, I feel like I'm a uh, promoter of Pear Deck and uh, I've been meeting with teachers one-on-one -on -one, either Zoom or in person or to the department meetings to really show teachers how to use Pear Deck. Pear Deck is not just something for distance learning you can use it live in your class and it's a great tool. Um, if you don't like to take all those essays home and, and look for all the little mistakes use Pear Deck. It gives instant feedback. Uh, students are typing and you can see in real time what they are writing. So here's a writing assignment I gave. Uh, we were looking at a sample AP essay. They had to highlight certain things and then they were going to write some commentary on how effective, what kind of a score the, the students had. So I can see what my students are writing and, and there's so much you can do on Pear Deck. Uh, finally, uh, to add on, a couple other tools and I know I'm gonna give you lots of tools today. I wouldn't do them all, i <laughs> choose some. But another one that I'm a big fan of is Padlet. Padlet is somewhat like my virtual uh, display wall and students get so much you know freedom to to do find memes find uh, gifs find uh, even videos 
that go along with our topic. So again, imagine putting your think questions here and students can add their idea and others can have a conversation. I always like to have them write it first and then discuss with partners or the other way around. First discuss with your, you know, AB partners and then work together to create a little Padlet wall. Uh, what else? Flipgrid, as I mentioned before, students can uh, share their ideas. They can interview each other. Sometimes I even had students create little cheesy think uh, videos, kind of like the ones on Study Sync. So we watched them and then they had to create their own. You know, there's a contest for Study Sync where students can send in uh, these little student created videos. Again, change it up, right? Uh, oh, and my goodness, uh, Adobe. Adobe uh, Cloud is one of my favorite ones to use because you basically can make a web page. Students can blog using this. In fact, I'm going to take a moment and show you what I have here of my own students. And my students had read uh, The Crucible. And so we did a uh, juvenile uh, justice, a social justice unit using uh, The Crucible as a springboard into issues that we're dealing with today, such as incarceration of uh, uh, minorities, uh, misogyny, and uh, we had uh, juvenile justice. So students created this, and let me just show you here. Uh, again, the layout so easy to do, uh, simple setup, and there's a tutorial link in the bottom. And this is what the students create. There's already a gallery of images that students can choose, and they scroll up. And here we have, again, beautiful images. We take them away from that traditional Google Doc, five paragraph essay, and all of a sudden students want to write because it looks again amazing professional and they could share it with family make it a presentation now it becomes they can add video to it right a uh, very uh, work that they could be proud of and so that's why i really enjoy uh, using uh, adobe uh, creative cloud and all of these things you know i have used myself and i'm always you know willing to meet with you like i said help you set this up uh, or you know whether it's through zoom uh, a couple other things the New York Times has uh, many resources, too. You could click here when you get the website. But just to take a look, you know, maybe I don't do all of the think questions. Maybe I give them something different. Uh, our students are coming in with lots of talents. They're skateboarders, they're rap artists, they're makeup artists. Give them a space for them to write about the things they love. In my class, we had class jobs and we had class reporters, sports reporters, national news reporters, tech reporters, video game reporters, right? and they had a chance to present their ideas. Uh, we even had a person who always did joke of the day. Uh, he was great. Um, let me show you here. Again, this is, uh, you know, students can analyze videos or music or music videos or film. That's always a good one. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, oh, storybook, right? So students like uh, anime. You can give them um, a graphic. So for example, this is a graphic novel that you can find on the Study Sync library, or students can create their own little books. Yes, and they can even print them out and you know sell them, <laughs> get donations, uh, or make some for elementary schools. That again, that would be a beautiful, great, uh, deeper learning lesson. Uh, what else do we have? So many things. Now, let's say you want to just teach them the traditional writing, which of course we're going to get to, right? So here's some other resources for you. Uh, for many, many years, the middle school and elementary teachers have been using RACE as the acronym for writing paragraphs. I'm a big fan of Jane Schaefer. I think our students need structure. Oh, please take a look at Paragraph Punch. This is an interactive and it takes students step by step on how to write a descriptive paragraph. It is wonderful, um, especially for your ELD students, uh, maybe your, your struggling writers. Um, it's a great, great program. Um, I love templates. I like using writing frames. So here you have lots of writing frames. Uh, and again, a plethora of lessons that you can do. So lots to look at, of course, because you know, you all have a lot of free time. Finally, here's always like to end with some, uh, some choice, a choice board. And so uh, you can choose here. All of these are things that I have either witnessed or I have seen and that you can use. They're all just hyperlinks that you can click on. And that's pretty much it. And so there you go. And here, our next virtual PD, I'm going to have to change it. So it's going to be November 8th instead of the 15th. And if you have any questions, please take a moment to give me some feedback. And you can always reach out. Thank you so much. And I hope, uh, let's see if there's any questions. Thank you.